Hey guys and welcome to this informative video on cardio. So I've been getting a lot of requests to uh, discuss the topic of cardio and to make sure that we're, we're all clear as to why and how we can potentially do cardio to benefit ourselves as not only athletes but individuals that are looking to get extremely lean or build as much muscle as possible. So why? Why do we do cardio? So the general thought behind cardio is that we are only using it as a tool and it is a tool for fat loss. Therefore, the tool makes it a process to burn calories. So that is essentially the function of cardio. Unfortunately, a lot of people will get confused behind cardio's magical tool of being the only contributory factor to fat loss, whereas you have to realize that you will have to be into a calorie deficit to achieve fat loss. Cardio is only a tool to add to that fire, okay? So, moving on to what and how we potentially can do cardio. So, cardiovascular activity, I tend to like to track this via calories burnt, because that is, in a sense, the goal of cardio activity. We, we want to burn calories. So therefore, I see the issue being with tracking cardio in terms of time is that as you progress in your diet as a natural bodybuilder, you will find that you slow down and you will find that you burn, therefore, less calories if you were only tracking time. So the intensity will drop, like that 20 minutes that you did at the start that was really intense is now not so intense and you end up burning significantly less calories over the course of your sessions. So I like to use calories tracked, and that brings me on to my machine of choice. I actually like myself to use the Stairmaster. I use the Stairmaster primarily because it gets my heart rate up a decent amount. I'd say that my cardio is primarily MIS, medium intensity steady state, as opposed to LITS, low intensity steady state. And this is because my heart rate is above the 50 to 60 percent range that you would generally see in lists. I think that this has some benefits not only besides burning more calories across the course of time but also just allowing me to feel like I'm actually doing cardio because a lot of the time with lists you'll feel so slow in your approach to it that you don't actually break a sweat and that it doesn't even feel like cardio. Whilst this is beneficial because it doesn't take away from your weight training as much, I think that from my perspective, I prefer to do slightly more intense cardio and get the job done quicker. So this brings me on to HIIT versus LIS. I generally don't prescribe HIIT and the reason being is because as bodybuilders we want to prioritise weight training. So to prioritise weight training we need to allow ourselves to recover. And that's going to be impacted by the amount of cardio we do and also the, the type of cardio we do. I find with most athletes, it's a struggle to recover from high intensity interval training where you are essentially going for bouts of potentially 20 minutes of intervals back and forth with going 100% intensity, smashing it like Chris Hoy, to going back on 50% intensity and slowing things down. So my preference is LIS or MISS. And this is primarily because we as bodybuilders want to focus on our weight training efforts and our weight training recovery is going to be impacted by these activities. And at the end of the day, like I said, we want to burn calories. So this brings me on to when. So obviously there's an argument or thought that fasted cardio will improve fat loss, provided that you are in a calorie deficit your state or the time at which you do cardio will make minimal impact on your actual fat loss journey. This is because if you do fasted cardio, you will still net the same amount of calorie burn that you would have done in a fed state. The argument appears to be that you will burn more fat across the course of the day because you haven't consumed any carbohydrates by this point. And the, also, the idea behind this is that when you do cardio later in the day, you will be primarily burning through carbohydrates. So you're still burning through calories. This is the whole idea of cardio again, is we're burning through calories. So I think that doing fasted cardio will actually sometimes be more of a negative than a positive towards your fat loss efforts. I think the only reason we can argue fasted cardio is if it works your lifestyle and it's efficient for you to get it done in the morning. 
So my preference is doing it either in the middle of my day or post-workout. And I generally prescribe this for my clients as well. I've never really prescribed fasted cardio, unless, like I said, it's efficient for their schedules. Another point to consider is supplementation for cardio. I think if you're doing fasted cardio, you need to be more aware of your potential supplementation for this effort. I would, if you are in a fat loss phase, supplement with HMB pre-cardio. I'd also look to supplement with potential BCAAs during the session. This is to poten potentially prevent any catabolism from the cardio efforts. So this is something that you can look into. However, I don't think that it's integral and the research behind BCAA supplementation on cardio is very minimal in terms of a positive outcome. So I think that you should primarily focus on your overall protein intake throughout the day. But if you want to maximize that potential 1% benefit, HMB and BCAA supplementation surrounding the cardio bout could be beneficial. Now, this brings me to equipment and potential equipment differences that we can use. So with cardio becoming quite boring in a sense, it's sometimes beneficial for you to mix up your efforts. So you could do activities that include boxing, maybe a prowler sprint or a battle rope. And these things promote variety in your cardiovascular activity. This I see as more of a benefit to general population clients or general population fat loss clients. Because as a bodybuilder, again, our primary goal is weight training and we don't want to take away from the recovery curve or at least we don't want to impact the recovery curve of weight training. We want to be in for our sessions with minimal fatigue and the fatigue that we carry over should only be created realistically by our weight training efforts. We shouldn't be creating bundles of fatigue from doing battle ropes, prowler, and all these other activities that do generally promote different levels of fatigue. And it's something that your body will again have to get accustomed to. So if you're someone that's looking to create variety in your cardio options and you want to find a more exciting new way to burn calories, then fun functional training like battle ropes and tire rolls and prowler sprints these things can be awesome, but I think it all has to be taken into consideration that the main goal is to burn calories and the main goal as a competitive bodybuilder is to burn calories in a way that's most efficient. I think for, finally I want to cover the idea of off-season cardio. As a bodybuilder, again, when we're in the off-season, a lot of people will generally take away the cardio efforts. and. I think that this actually is wrong in a sense because when we are doing sort of hypertrophy works and sets above eight, our cardiovascular system will be taxed but nowhere near in the same manner that a bout of five to ten minutes of hit or list training or miss training will do. So I think from heart health perspective and also at the same time potentially with smaller females, it will allow for a slightly higher caloric intake and keep your heart healthy and just keep you ticking over that little bit better and making you feel that little bit more healthy. So I think that off-season cardio has its benefits, but if you are someone that has to eat extremely high calories, then I wouldn't bother because essentially you're just digging yourself into a hole. Something else I would like to add is the benefit of distracting yourself during your cardio sessions. I found this to be massively beneficial. Some things that I like to use personally are podcasts, Instagram, Facebook and just generally using my phone and I find this to not distract from the intensity of the cardio obviously if you were doing hit or interval training this may prove more difficult but I find that having some level of distraction via a podcast or music or my Instagram feed is generally a positive and gets the cardio effort out the way really quickly. I hope that this covers pretty much all topics with regards to cardio, but likewise guys, if you do have any questions, please ask, and I will see you back for another video very soon. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, love you lots. Cheers guys.